It's no secret that when crime novelists decide to take a page out of their own books, things often don't turn out to be as expected. Watch this video if you would like to know about the juicy details of a crime like this based on true events. Call to Action In this video, we will be talking about the bizarre case of Nancy Gelber, who plotted her own husband's murder for her next best-selling novel. How did she plan it? Did she get caught? Did she write a book on the series of events? Answers to all these questions shall be answered. All you have to do is keep watching. Nancy Gelber's Past Nancy Gelber is a Houston local, according to her Facebook profile, and a graduate of Klein Oak High School as well as the University of Houston. During the late 1970s and early 1980s, she claimed to have worked at Fulbright and Jaworski for several years. Nancy was also a local celebrity after she published her very own crime novel, Temporary Amnesia. The novel is a mixture of suspense, crime, thriller, comedy, and romance, which follows along the journey of a man in prison who escapes and commits a series of bank robberies along with the help of a gang of prostitutes. Her pen name was Nance J. Mancuso, and after the average success of her first novel, she began dreaming of pursuing novel writing as a full-time career. She even claimed to know Leon Jaworski, a Watergate prosecutor, personally. Nancy's husband, Joseph Richard Gelber, told the police that soon after her small success, she began this whole new life where she partied every single day and did drugs and spent a lot of money every day. Gelber's Marital Problems in April of 2012, Nancy stated on her Facebook page that she had returned home to discover her husband, Joseph Gelber, cheating on her. A few days later, she announced there again that they were going through a divorce, but they would continue to live together until it was finalized. She also said that she has essential tremors, a condition that causes the body to shake and necessitates brain surgery. She said that she would also be taking her ex-husband to court to get him to reinstate her on his health insurance. She also went on to state that she was going to have deep brain stimulation surgery and he pulled her from the insurance two months in advance and had kept their family's money from her since he wanted the additional money to spend on his extramarital affairs. A conflict of personalities was cited as the cause for Joseph's divorce action. As part of the process, she filed a counter-divorce petition and requested that the judge issue a temporary restraining order against the husband while the divorce proceedings were underway. She also requested that she be granted the couple's house and vehicle, as well as a name change, to Nance Jane Mancuso. Nancy hiring a hitman to kill her husband. Since Nancy was a crime fiction writer, she assumed that all the rules were in her favor. She was completely mistaken. After learning that she wanted to pay someone to assassinate her husband, her friend Jeremy, drug dealer and police informant, sympathized with her. It was also revealed to Jeremy that she intended to kill him violently, ripping off his nipples and penis if she were to do it himself. After this, Jeremy sent in a tip informing the Brazos County Sheriff's Office of Nancy's plans to hire a hitman to murder her husband. In a very sophisticated sting operation, criminal investigator Terry Young, in collaboration with informant Jeremy, set up a meeting with Nancy on December 7, 2011. He met her in the parking lot of the LaSalle Hotel in Bryan, Texas, pretending to be a hired killer named Dwight. Asserting that she wanted Jody dead painlessly, she asked him whether he was affiliated with police enforcement. This is because the spouse is always the target of suspicion. She requested Dwight to make the murder appear like an accident and wanted to know as little as possible about the crime so that she wouldn't be implicated. Nancy asked for a swift and painless murder when she arranged her husband's death with someone she believed was a hitman according to tape recordings shown in her trial. In addition, she is said to have informed the police that she would not speak out of question by the police and that it would not be a surprise to her as she was well aware of the fact that spouses are frequently the first to be questioned. After the operation was completed and Joseph Gelber would be killed, Gelber promised Dwight a 14 karat gold and 36 diamond wedding ring as a down payment with a $60,000 payment after the deed was done. When she was caught, these tapes would implicate her because she didn't realize that she was being filmed. It was shown before the Brazos County jury on the first day of Gelber's trial for solicitation to kill. She could spend the rest of her life in jail if she is convicted of the first-degree felony, 
and the defendant's ex-husband Jody Gelber as well as defense attorneys John Brick and Brian Baker summoned four witnesses on the first day of the trial. At least three life insurance policies totaling almost $500,000 had Nancy Gelber named as the principal beneficiary, according to Jody Gelber, a Brian native who has been a Texas A&M mechanic for over 40 years. The Setup Investigators were concerned that Nancy would abandon the hitman plot and kill Jody herself, so they told him of her plans. Unsurprised, Jody had to cope with the fact that his homicidal estranged wife was living in the same house as him, causing him to dread poisoned food and sleep with a gun under his pillow. And because they didn't want to put Jody's life at risk, the police set up another trap, this time employing concealed cameras and a microphone and telling Nancy that her husband had been killed in a hit and run case. Nancy put up a very unimpressive performance. When the policeman told her what he had said, she kept repeating that she just couldn't believe it, and she didn't seem as moved by the news as one might expect. She even questioned her own reaction and wondered why she didn't break into tears when she heard about her husband. She then asked to get dressed, and immediately after, she began telling the police that he had changed from a lovely Santa Claus to a cheating Tiger Woods. The Initial Investigation after Nancy got dressed, she was brought into the sheriff's office for questioning, and they kept up the facade. On their way to the interrogation room, Nancy saw Dwight, the undercover investigator who was posing as the arrested man. The look on her face when she saw him, the godsack silence, was all that the police needed to see. In the interrogation, the investigator showed her a picture of Dwight and asked her if she knew him. She said she didn't, and asked if he was the man who had killed her husband. After this, they showed her a picture of her wedding ring and the pictures of her husband that she had given to Dwight and asked her if she knew why he would have them with him. She again said that she had no idea. After this, the police showed her the actual wedding ring and she denied that it was hers. When asked if she had her ring with her, she claimed to have lost it. She then tried to find out what they knew about Dwight. After getting panicked and nervous about the situation, Nancy was allowed to go back home. The Final Investigation just when Nancy Gelber thought that she had may have gotten away with the murder of her husband Joseph, a knock came on the door. A few hours after the first questioning, the police brought her in again. This time, they gave her a little surprise. During the investigation, Joseph, who Nancy thought was dead, walked into the room. She was in complete shock for a minute and went back to being completely calm. The investigators gave her a final chance to come clean and tell them what she knew about the hitman. She refused to comply and even tried to pin the entire thing on Joseph, saying that he could have hired Dwight to set Nancy up for murder. After this, Terry Young, the investigator with the sheriff's office who posed as Dwight, entered the room and everything was revealed to Nancy. The investigators then arrested Nancy on the 9th of December, 2011. The Trial Prosecutors presented both cassettes at Nancy Gelber's trial in which she was accused of soliciting murder. Divorce had been finalized at this point in time for the Gelbers. As Nancy's husband explained to the prosecution, Jody's $180,000 life insurance policy was used to fund Nancy's reckless spending. Jody Gelber, Terry Young, and two other witnesses set forth a complete case against Nancy. For solicitation of capital murder, a jury at her pretrial hearing sentenced her to life in prison. It was asked by her defense team that she be sentenced to 10 years of probation, However, the ruling was in favor of the prosecution's request for a 30-year maximum sentence because she had expressed her desire to have her husband killed with extreme brutality. Nancy was suspected to have plans of using the entire incident as a plot for her newest crime novel. Judge Langley forewarned Nancy that any earnings from such an endeavor would have to be split with Jody or she might be sued. Even though Gelber was condemned to 30 years in prison for her deadly ruse, she remained composed throughout. Until 2027, she will not be eligible for parole. Hers is one of many instances in which real crime authors become criminals. What other crime novelists gone crazy stories do you know of? Let us know in the comments down below and give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please share with your friends who are murder mystery fanatics, and I hope to see you again next time guys. Bye again.